Speaking of trouble here, Fly is already trying to shove them aside and be the bodyguard of the Infernal Drake, so to speak, for the moment, while there is thing. a little bit of a push and pull going on mid, as we're saying. And here we go for the drink. Well, seems like uh, members of the side of one team is trying to have a little bit of a glimpse where or not has the Drake been startled. But there's the lack of wards for the moment while one team esports are not willing to take much of a risk. The stakes are extremely high. The buy to the quarterfinals yeah. will definitely mean a whole lot for either team, especially for the Vietnamese region who have definitely seen some fair share of struggle even on uh, their arch nemesis back in their uh, local territory or the region in particular. SBTC have outshined them overall in their grand finals. And this is where Subarus, of course, can not only save a lot of face, but be the pride of Vietnam once again. Early jewel in the top side as one team seemed to be abandoning that Drake in favor of trading it for the Rift Herald. I support this. Again, they don't want to take the 5v5. That doesn't end well for them. So they instead take the trade. Drake will go over to Cerberus. Harold will be picked up by one team. Wow. Just so respectful of one another right now. It's only a very slight goal lead for Cerberus Esports at the moment. Yes, we did have Shelly, of course, the Riff Harold of getting popped up over top side so globe's gonna be giving you a whole lot of gold by getting a knock on this turret so Cerberus esports they will need to just take this one down before another knock goes on towards the tier two yep your rift herald charge up there in the top lane presented by globe as my co-caster implied <laughs> I, think, I think we have we have to explicitly state it i think if we imply that they're sponsoring it Oh, we get in trouble. Producer Zen comes. Uh, just hinting for a race, are we? <laughs> uh, just oh, kidding. right. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Just kidding. We, I guess I, I, I'm happy by just getting to cast the Summer Super Cup already. Don't so, say that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not That's bad negotiating, <laughs> uh, okay. That's bad negotiating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, I'll take notes of that. I, I, I won't do that anymore. <laughs> Anyways. So, Camille, obviously go in for an early stasis. Very wise move because this is where Xianyo will be able to not only go for those deep dives, but to make it out alive, saving maybe the flash or the later hook shot that will be coming up online with a couple of seconds being bought. Now, with the Rift Herald, this is where one team esports can actually look to control so much of the portion of the barren side of the river and now trying to hope for a pickup. Faye isn't really the member that they oh, want no. to get, but this is where BMM is, is this in trouble. charm lands. Redemption, provision. He dodges the charm. BMM, that was incredible movement. And it sets everything up as now Faye can charge forward past the ruins of this turret and land this a three man cataclysm. There is the wombo combo. Heroic entrance over the top. Cool. Yo, no HP. Killed <gasps> out of the stasis. An explosive gas splits the team. A double kill to Faye. And that's what Cerberus were waiting for. Wow, Taku, he may be missing in action for the most part of the match, but when he came in, he dropped a Narva bomb, or should I say a cast, on top of the head of Xianyo, just to get them up ahead. And this is where Cerberus further knocks down all these turrets, and now they are in the clear advantage at the moment. Going to be heading back just to make some purchase. I want to see what's the next item on board. Kaisa is probably going to be having some big, items out there while well, Taku is going to be focusing on a Rabadon. I, that, that is exactly what this Cerberus team comp is built for. Every time, every time they team fight, you will see some variation of that. Where Faye is able to land the Cataclysm and then off the back of that, you can Killer Instinct, you can Heroic Entrance, you can Explosive Cast, you could just be a Darius and walk through the front. Like, everything comes from that, and it is such a good teamfight composition as a result. It's so easy to execute. That's right. You've definitely stated it. 
uh, the major key points that Cerberus really wants to play to the entirety of their win conditions. And now Kit might just be in a sticky spot, but the rest of one team will follow up. Here comes the redemption as well. But members of one team esports knows that this is the worst time to commit. If any of them falls flat, it will call for Baron. If any member of one team dies here, I think I agree with you. This game may be over. Cerberus are going to kill that Scuttler, which will give them vision on the Baron, and then I bet they roam down for that Drake. I like how they are just playing on this sort of slower tempo, making sure that they can have a little bit more room to make bigger decisions. One big fight, like you said, could have possibly end the game, and they don't want that to just be crushed instantaneously, so they want to try to drag it as much as they can. Ooh. That charm does not hit, but here comes Fly getting chased upon. Hexet ultimatum locked onto Fly. They're trying to pop the grand challenge for the heal, and they can't because he have heroic entrances. He goes over the top. In the meantime, very, very low HP on the front line, but nobody from Cerberus dies. <gasps> Shot Yo, Ninja, and Sue fall one after the other. A deep dive from Genza will find a double make it a triple kill. And that may be it because Cerberus, off of a perfect team fight, can turn instantly towards this Baron. So far, Cerberus has been playing a perfect game. Look at how clean they are, seven to nil. Now, this bar power play presented by Gold will probably be getting them so much of this room to breathe and, of course, perhaps knock down the Nexus. With so many problems intact, one team esports now have to juggle the coexisting wave that's currently knocking on the bottom side as well as the top side. So this Fuhrer will be forced to hug towards the top side of the map while CES, they're working towards getting another Drake and one team esports understand. There's no way, no way possible that they can just move in without suffering a blow at all. So I guess you could definitely say that this whole entirety of the graph was extremely greedy where You've already pointed out, Fiora as well as Ari can only do one thing at a time. Yeah, and when we're seeing that weakness here, as Cerberus so far have a near perfect game. Every Drake, two to one in the turrets, seven kills to none, and a 5,000 gold lead. They need to find this kill. They should find this kill. Heroic entrance from Fly is actually a massive mistake as it will feed over two kills to one team. And perhaps a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of light shines at the end of the tunnel. Well, I guess that's a little bit of a consolation prize for them. Uh, I absolutely don't agree with Fly pulling on the hero's entrance, unless it was pulled up way early on before the health bars even reach 50% for the Darius, then it does make sense. You want to make sure that he gets to uh, get the lifesteal off of his first spell. And on top of that, maybe turn the fight around with the Shield of Zirin and then connect it with all the Noxian Guillotine that you may actually get in reset. That was just a little bit of tier craft, which obviously did not happen. So Cerberus still have a couple more buffs intact on Fly Taku as well as, well, I believe Genza. And for now, most of the members could just easily look to rotate top, get a couple of uh, auto attacks off of this tier one turret. It should go down. Turret will fall top lane, making the furthest forward one team turret that tier two in the bottom line. In the meantime, though, one team are doing what they do best. That is this Fiora split push. That's what they should be playing towards. Oh boy. Here's the shove. You accept this trade. There's no way you hold that turret. Yeah. And they, one team know it. They just play safe. They just really have to buy time for this Fiora. I don't see how. Here comes the flash. Oh, explosive cask. Taku, he's done it. Heroic entrance over the top. Here's the attempt. Oh, huge knock up for the quickness. The grand entrance making a massive difference. Two will play back as the damage is thrown in from range. Bye bye. Good. They're going to try and turn this kid off of the TP. Will be on oh. to Genza. Genza's no HP. Genza flashes away. Genza will survive. So Jean Yo needs to take to the front lines. And they are ended by a slap dunk from the Noxian guillotine. Jean Yo out to the GA. Has nothing to do but walk away. And Cerberus don't lose enough. One team 
are still on the back foot. It was initially looking pretty good for Cerberus Esports once they actually moved to the tier two. Needed to actually land a couple more hits. They kind of overextended their dive, especially for Faye, when nobody could possibly extend to that range. Well, that forces Fly to also respond with that sort of knee jerk action. And one team managing to punish beautifully. Now, Chances is still available. And one team Esports is already camping and setting up for this death rush. Taku will not spot anything at all. Well, members of the side of one team esports, they can get the scuttle very easily and fly. Hoping to actually get the catch, but Rakan has wings. Remember that. While Faye just goes in to clear everything up. So this is where they will reestablish control into the enemy lines. Across the map here is Cerberus just slowly beginning to work in. Setting up the vision, making it very hard for one team to leave their base. Then you turn for this, the Baron. What do you do, one team? You're not gonna be able to get past Fly. 3,000, they have vision now. 2,000 HP, Baron picked up. One team can do nothing. The Globe Baron power play is picked up by Cerberus Esports as they, with a 5,000 gold lead, are waiting by the Elder. Oh, here comes the scanners as well, and thank goodness they did not manage to go there a couple of seconds early, but there will be a little bit of movement here, trying to actually pick up onto Baya. Baya moves away with the Spirit Rush. They really have to just leave this Elder team, but they will try to 3,000! Here's the dive into the middle of it. Steel, no. Cerberus get the Elder Cloud Dragon and the full up. Shanyo instantly gone. Ninja down as well. And Baya's just got to run for his life as Cerberus raced through the mid lane. They'll get him as well. It's an oppo teammates. And Cerberus will be able to lock in the first spot from Group C. They are going straight to the quarterfinals. Wow, Cerberus Esports, what a way to actually close off the entirety of Group C. Now, they will be taking that slot into the quarterfinals, like you've mentioned, in the best way possible, shutting down one team Esports. So we definitely want to take a look at all these massive plays overall. And you just got to say, this team fight composition is just the perfect thing that they needed against one team. Yeah, I mean, one team drafted directly oppositionally in playstyle, right? They drafted to split push, and then it didn't feel like they were able to properly act on that. Kid, who, who was known in previous mobile games, he's, he's been very, very good in mobile MOBAs for a very long time as a split pushing sidelaner. We didn't really get to see that. There were a couple of moments where they took down, you know, two, three turrets. There's a reason uh, a kid has the most gold in the game, but it wasn't enough to equalize or to or to even remotely uh, manifest that gold in the team fights that would decide the game. You need such a massive lead on Fiora to properly contest the Elder Cloud Drake, the Baron, and those are the objectives that this game came down to. Yeah, and I was just looking back into the itemization as well. Yes, he does have a lot of gold, but I want to question the Swifties. He didn't really get to upgrade that. So perhaps if he actually had maybe a teleport to regroup into some of these team fights while he was split pushing, it may have actually resulted better. But here comes Opal Reno 5, player of the game, where we saw a lot of heavy focus coming from Cerberus over the bottom side, which they matched to the pull up. What a beautiful Wombo combos. And look at Taku. He moves right in, he drops the explosive cast right on top of Ninja, and that is where they managed to still push the lead forward with another fight up mid. And, and that fight down bottom was such a brilliant thesis statement for Cerberus. That, it was just, in essence, what the team wants to do. Mm -hmm. And it's, in essence, what the team is built to do. It's, it's such a good, de dead simple, easy to execute composition. This was the one time we kind of saw what the one team team is built to do, which is win these skirmishes in the sidelines. It helps it was a two on three or a two different three v ones, depending on how you want to frame it. But mm -hmm. that's the theory as they get into the sidelines and they win those duels. And unfortunately, that was the only time this game 
that one team managed to isolate a Cerberus player. Yeah, that's also on Cerberus as well as they dive a little bit too deep. Now, I felt that they should have perhaps let go of this Elder Drake and just tried to recuperate from there, rely back on Kid because this guy has already been doing quite a decent job at it. But they think that, you know, it, it's now or never, right? They, they don't really have the items to actually burst anyone down. Every member of the likes of Cerberus managed to survive and this is also all thanks to all the set that comes in from the Jarvan and Faye. It wasn't just the leasing that he could always rely on. At this time, he's showing up with some really interesting items because this is one of the rare few times that we are seeing a Frozen Heart being purchased overall. Yeah, Faye did such a very good job. Uh, as you indicated with the Frozen Heart, with the Gargoyle, Sto with the Gargoyle Stone Plate as their boot enchantment, kind of operating as a secondary tank for the team. And this is what Jarvan does very well. Uh, one of the reasons I prefer Jarvan quite heavily over the Camille we're seeing here, Jarvan is not as good at, as the Camille as an individual damage dealer, but if you build him as a tank, he's not supposed to be. The key theory is this Jarvan can win you team fights by himself provided there's follow-up, if that makes sense. Whereas the Camille is never going to be able to do that. At best, if the Camille does everything right, they find an isolated kill on the team fight. And sometimes that makes the difference. But I would argue that Jarvan is worth it, uh, worth 10 times what the Camille can do on an organized team, especially on a team like Cerberus that was drafted around it. Yeah, we start off the very first pick for this entirety of the draft with the Gragas being picked up by Cerberus first, which also meant that the Galio was kind of open for uh, the likes of one team esports to pick it up, but they missed that opportunity when you give yeah. so much room, then this whole Wombo combo kind of fall perfectly into place, which Cerberus is so happy to just get that sorted out. Yeah, anytime you let a team have Galio, <laughs> Gragas, Jarvan, what are you doing? Get out of there. Anyway. Just just, just don't even get near your enemies by then. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to take a moment to cool down here on the caster desk. Exactly two minutes to be clear. Then we're going to return and tie the very last loose ends. We got Group D still ahead. The Group of Dread, as Riku said. And we've still got tiebreaker potential on the line. You won't want to miss it. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back. We have Group Z, the group of dread, as Riku called it. And this is our closest group left. Well, it's our only group left. As we have a tiebreaker potential. Would you like to run us through it? All right. This is the scenario right here. So in this particular match, Pajara Dragons will need to win it in order to place themselves back in towards a third place tie. And also what we need this criteria to go into effect is also for the likes of MVP to lose their next upcoming match to Rurum United. So with these two condition, the question is, can the Dragons survive or remain to be a myth back in the folklores when they will clash against Flash Wolves here as Flash Wolves starts on the blue side. Now, let's look at the bands real quick. What would Flash Wolves be up to this time around? And this is this is really hard for Berjaya because because of their losses earlier today, they lost to Burry Room. They literally need to be one of the best teams in the tournament to stay in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And to actually add on top of this factor out there, perhaps they did watch the previous matchup when they were facing off against Buriram. Buriram actually took majority of the lead. Now, Jared Dragons just need to reenact it, but to make things better overall. Now, moving through the bands, there's not going to be any Lee Sin, Galio, Gragas, or even Camille. So one of the better options on the table will definitely be the Zakes to really put them the pressure and have a generally safe lane coming into the mid side for Bruce. This is a very Flash Wolves pick. They love to have the potential to poke at range. And Burjaya, I like this, are already building a counteractive playstyle. This is uh, and Jarvan always is a team fight focused composition. And there's a really good combo built in to Seraphine plus Jarvan because the Cataclysm opens up for easy encores every day of the week. And I don't really agree with pick up the Seraphine all too early because Ethan is having that Rakan free. We saw what the Rakan did today. He stole the Baron. He absolutely ran through the entirety of the teams that he was facing against. And Eason was just playing a perfect day of Rakan. And once again, that Zyra Rakan combo will not be stopped right here, which may raise even more eyebrows like, but Jar Dragons, did they really think this true? But perhaps there was another plan right here and it all has to be this final pick. Okay, this is the first what? Annie that we are seeing in the competition. But let to let you know, this it's isn't entirely new. Because Pajar Dragons. It's their elimination game, though, as they pull out the first ever tournament, Danny. I don't know what to really say about this. Okay. I love it. I don't want to say about it. This is such a good team fight comp they've drafted. I love this Pajar draft. I would take it any day of the week over what Flash Wolves have drafted. The only exception to that being in the jungle, where I think Kha'Zix could get very scary. Other than that, though, Burjaya have won this draft because they've drafted a very easy to execute team fight composition. It hinges around the Jarvan. You can follow that up with all of Seraphine's kit, Varus's long ranged poke, uh, uh, and the Annie. The Annie is going to combo so well into this because she's uh, very easy to land AoE targeted spells. If you can land the Cataclysm and put Tibbers in there, if you can land the Cataclysm and put an Encore and Tibbers in there, throw in a Barris Arrow, you are just instantly winning team fights. Yeah, when we talk about team fight, yes, that's definitely something that we really have to take good note of. But just look at how immobile the rest of the members are. This, uh, of course, we have to put the exception for the Jarvan overall. And if they were to be escaping or so, there is no dash mechan mechanism coming in for any of their champions in particular. So it's about committing fully in towards this team yeah. fight. You can't really and, and run out of it. Perjaya are going to struggle if they're not in a 5v5 uh, because Flash Wolves have drafted a very good skirmishing composition. They have this independent unit of Zaya Rakan that isn't necessarily going to dominate in lane uh, or, or in the early game team fights, but will do all right come late game. 
and is going to be very good in 2v2 skirmishes. They have Garen, who's almost impossible to kill, and they have Kha'Zix, who is going to be roaming the map, trying to find a Seraphine out alone, a Varus, who's been left behind by the seam. And this is why I'm so excited by the Annie, because the Annie's ability to point-and-click stun individual targets to instantly guarantee that a Kha'Zix who shows themselves can't get anything done is going to be critical to Brajaya Dragons' hopes in this game. It is very much going to come down to how well they can shut down this Kha'Zix. That's true. I was just about to highlight this Kha'Zix will have quite a fun time if he's going to get you know, the early pickoffs right there just to get ahead, and that's where the snowball begins. You got so many options to burst out if, you know, if they were to be isolated at all, given any point of time, and hopefully not so, because you mentioned they will need to stake all together. So, jumping onto Annie is definitely a death wish. You don't want to do that, but the key target here of their focus will definitely be their bomb laners. Either side will do, you know, just go ahead try to actually go in for all these sort of members. But then again, there's also all these soft layers of crowd control coming across Winter, Sagi. So at times, Karuda, whenever the passive is available for this Annie. But hopefully t will be the sixth member that they need inside this fight to make yeah. it a 6v5. It's a 6v5, it's unfair. <laughs> That's the theory at least. Flash Wolves coming in second place out of the Taiwan regional qualifier, but chewing up this group as yet undefeated. One of the only teams, them and Cerberus, to be undefeated so far. If Berjaya Dragons want to stay alive in this tournament, they will need to break the Flash Wolves streak. If Berjaya Dragons want to make it to the playoff stage of the Summer Super Cup, they need to win this game here and now, and that will only unlock the potential for a tiebreaker, as MVP, who they would be tiebreaking against, can still win their next game, can still beat Buran United in the final game of the night, and then it doesn't matter what Brajaya do here today. For a chance, for a hope contra, they need to do the impossible, and even then, it is only for a chance, for a hope. That's right. Now, there's going to be a lot of pressure being put on the shoulders of Zisune. We saw there are times that he did play very, very well, making all these solo kills happen over the top side of the map. But when it comes down to, you know, chasing after kills, there's this bad habit that he has to get rid of. Now, even more so, because Zisune is meant to be there just for the rest of them to come in to lower down the HP bars. The pokes are actually looking very good uh, from the likes of Bajara Dragons. But if he's not there to finish the job with the Noxian Guillotine, it will not actually be a good result for Bajara Dragons. Now, let's focus back on the side of Flash Wolves as well. Yes, we have Ysera now playing on to the Garen. Hopefully the matchup's going to be doing decent for him. But Demons, alongside with Ethan, so far unshaken on a bomb lane. Now they pull up with this sort of a poke composition just to try to force members of the likes of Flash Wolves to hug on the turret. Is this finally the recipe for success for Bajara Dragons? Or could that be, you know, I, the secret sauce on what keeps the fire breeding in the form of the Annie? I, I will tell you, I, I, I'm not going to commit to Bajara Dragons being able to upset Flash Wolves, right? Mm -hmm. That is such a, that would be such a shock. Yeah. But I will tell you, I didn't even think it was a possibility before I saw this draft. And when I saw Bajaya Dragons come out of the Malaysia region, uh, uh, a team fight focused region, as you will attest to, mm -hmm. Katra, mm -hmm. and pull out a team fight focused team, I, there's a hope now. I see the path. Yeah. And Winter so far has been playing a very uh, clean Seraphine as well, doing very well in the, mm -hmm. the last Very game. good Seraphine. Maybe, for, uh, of course, in comparison to what the Jess, what the Jess would have better stats on his very recent run as well. But, you know, we've been staring <laughs> on this Whirlpool or what do we want to call this again? It's El Vort Anorak. Uh, if you're wondering why we're hovering here, it is because we've been told that there were issues with the lobby, so we're resetting that. Uh, okay. I wanted to ask you, Contra, because you did have, you do have a unique angle on Burjaya Dragons. Could you maybe fill in our audience on their path here? Okay. 
let's have a look uh, from the start of everything. When they first formed this team, they take many of all these ex-pro players of the Malaysian scene when they were used to playing uh, League of Legends Championship Malaysia on the PC side. Now, many of them were just known as second best at most. It was always about Kuala Lumpur Hunters. Now, finally putting the pieces together, they went into preseason and they got real close. They, when it comes down to the best of five, so best of seven, they were one game away from securing the title and they have always been reverse swept by Geek Fan. Now, tides have turned. They went into the ESL Mobile Open, C Icon Series Malaysia, in the hopes to, of course, topple the likes of Geek Fan. That didn't happen again when it comes down to how they played out the uh, group stages, nor even on the playoffs in the upper bracket. Once again, on the reverse sweep, they got knocked down in the lower bracket. Then they hit them towards the upper bracket and finally fixing all the puzzles, putting it to place, and they got a 4-1 win against Geek Fam. And we could definitely see why that many of the fans have already converted and they celebrate this new game because of this story run. And on top of that, I want to add a little bit more story of, you know, the manager. Right after that 4-1 win, he shaved his hair on the live stream. <laughs> he absolutely did it. And I didn't get to see it because it was broadcasted on a Malay stream in particular. They definitely had fun with it. Now, what will Eduardo do if they were to make it out of groups? I mean, <laughs> he's running out of hair. Please don't shave mine. But... Hey, I, I like him. <laughs> You're setting the stakes, but I'm worried, Contra. Have you have you put the bar too high? I, I, I'm just hyped because, up. I, I, I'm just getting everybody Because what could he possibly hype. do? If he's I, willing to shave his entire head just to qualify for this tournament, what could he possibly do if they if they get this miracle comeback to qualify? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't want him to shave any other sides of wherever oh, it is no. uh lakes maybe <laughs> uh if he does have harry lakes okay uh maybe he can go for that or urgent question <sighs> okay for the Brajaya dragons does your manager have harry legs let's get this back on topic shall we uh i want to while we're waiting for this remake to happen uh talk about the rest of the games we've seen today because we have got quite a lot of results nailed in so i'd like to bring the audience up to speed Mm -hmm. uh, we watched Group C earlier today, Contra, mm -hmm. uh, and I would say it played out roughly as we expected it to, right? We get mm -hmm. Cerberus out in first place, 5-1 and one is their final record. They're going straight to the quarterfinals as they won over one team who slid into that second place preferential seeding in the round one of playoffs. Onyx Esports also get out, uh, but unfortunately Impunity were the third team to go home. Uh, with a winless 0-6 record. Was that, did everything in that Group C kind of live up to your expectations? Oh, don't uh, answer that question. Okay. We're ready to go. That's right. I'll leave that question aside because we are ready for our match here to see can Fragile Dragon survive or can Flash Wolves achieve that undefeated streak not done by any other team of the regions so far. Now, starting off, yeah. just a little bit of shove between the two sides. Flash Wolves, as yet undefeated. No team made it through the groups without dropping a game. Flash Wolves would be the only team to get out of groups completely undefeated. But on the opposite side, as you set up, Berjaya Dragons, in order to stay in this tournament, need to win this game. And that only gives them a chance uh, they still need MVP to lose their next game, the final game of the day. But at least they're in with that shot, that chance at tiebreakers. If they win this game, if they upset Flash Wolves beating the unbeatable team. Yeah. Now, just going into uh, the entirety of all these composition, if you guys are still wondering, what is this Annie doing? Oh, a dive! And Susuni, he barely survives, and this will be a one-for-one -one blow. But yet again, Bajara Dragons do this walk away with a couple extra pennies out of that exchange. And I really want to highlight this Annie matchup against Zinx. I've traditionally played this matchup for years ago before I even hop onto Wild Rift. Zinx definitely has a certain advantage where you can easily lop all these bouncing balls, bombs, right on top of Annie and just outrange her. So she will struggle before she even hit level five. But when she does, you got to be worried about T-Burst.
So, something to watch out for in the mid lane is we are waiting for Karato to step up. And once Karato does get past that level 5, I suspect we're going to see a very scary team fight from the Burjaya Dragons. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus in on the trade we saw up in the top lane as well, though, because I do think it's worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. uh, First Blood, as you referenced, went over to Burjaya Dragons, so they get a tiny bit more gold, but probably not worth uh, making making a big deal out of. Mm -hmm. What is, I think, worth making a big deal out of is that Chili gets that kill. Mm -hmm. So that gold goes on to the jungler, who can now uh, uh, apply it to other lanes and will be able to get to that level 5 a little bit quicker, which is very important, because Jarvan kind of begins to exist at level <gasps> 5. Oh boy, we just witnessed a kill right down the bottom side as well. So far, it doesn't seem to be working it's disastrous. out. disastrous. Like, this is where you want to, to get a hit, sure. But then again, if you don't have the lane surviving, it doesn't make any sort of uh, reason yeah. for him to even come in for a gank. Sagi is absolutely struggling. And this is a Rakan versus Zaya combo, which has been feared by many which nobody inside of this group has ever addressed the issue. I've talked to the rest of the panel hosts, and I, if I were to ban against Flash Wolves, I need to invest in one ban on this Rakan, or just steal it away. I, I think the real answer here is Eason's Rakan, which you could see there finding the opening. We cut in a little bit late, but it was Eason's Rakan that got Sagi, that found that uh, opportunity. Eason stole a Baron, on Rakan earlier today. Eason mm -hmm. got a double kill on Rakan earlier <laughs> today. Mm -hmm. It's just terrifying. Eason is right now one of the best support players in this tournament in Southeast Asia, in Wild Rift, in my estimation. That's very much true. Now, looking for a dive over the bomb side. Winter now has to actually force his flash for L. Soaks right in. Instead, they catch on to Soggy, and things go from bad to worse. Soggy now getting shut off completely, and it's all about Eason again. We have raved about this Rakan, and he has shown up. Eason able to flash in there, find the charge, find the knockup, and that makes the difference. It gives Flash Wolves a complete shutdown onto the Burjaya Dragon's AD carry. What are they going to try and do? They're going to get two plates back in the mid lane. And I don't think that that makes up for how much they've just lost. Regia Dragons do at least get a little bit more than that. Also getting two plates in the top lane, uh, which will somewhat mitigate the gold loss. But Flash Wolves have completely shut Saki out of the early game and gotten first turret. And that first turret <gasps> should open up. Oh! What a timber! Stopping in with a double stun and loss out of the Encore as well. Now the rest of Blast Wolves, they're scrambling to move aside. That will be an exchange here with Demon getting taken out for Winter. I do believe that that is favorable for the likes of Bajar Dragons for their investment just to that at least put this full stop on this area. Yeah, that, that turret take should have unlocked this Drake. That turret tank should have meant that this Drake was very easy to take, but we oh, get a first preview sneaky. of what the Berjaya Dragons composition can do in a team fight. Now the question is, is Cookie going to be able to smite this before the Rome comes in? The answer barely. Chili working his way down there, but not in time. Oh wow, Bruce ran out of mana as well. I think that was absolutely cheeky of Cookie to do so. So, Berjaya Dragons, I guess that they really have to go back to the drawing board. And just to try to stabilize this condition right now, Varus on the first item possibly won't be able to actually contribute too much of damage overall as they've already got probably the rotation being set by Demon as well as Eason moving over the top side here as they are trying to contest for their Herald as well as Gunnel alongside. 4-2 to two in favor of Flash Wolves at the moment. Very slight goal edge for the moment. Needing to actually wait for the Encore to be up available for Bajar Dragons to actually get things done here. But this is not going to be looking to be that great of a case. Here Double root. Chain of Corruption dropping right in. Here comes the grand entrance. Doesn't really actually connect. Calculus is blocking into place for the members of Bajar Dragons. Now, Ysera is in trouble for only a slight bit. The rest of the members of Flash Wolves, they're looking to actually stretch Soggy. them down. There it goes. Sagi going for the snipe! Two kills! One. 
That's a double, but how far can he run away from Demon? He is pretty much all cornered up. The damage is not going to be enough. Kuki goes in for the triple just to pass him out. Saki tries so hard there, and you see the benefits of this composition, of this team fight, as the Burjaya Dragons are able to fight it remarkably even and get away with the Rift Herald. The Rift Herald charge presented by Globe is in the hands of Chili. However, Flash Wolves win the team fight and continue to grow their gold lead, which now sits at about 3,000. You know, one thing that Bajara Dragons have feared has come into effect. Cookie now, 4 nil. This is a very scary Kha'Zix, and he's going to be hopping around, securing those kills, so long as they do not have any of these Stasis Enchantment, Guardian Angels, or any item for survivability in particular, he will have free reign, free access to wherever he wants to go just to get a kill sorted out. As we head towards the mid game, there is a power spike on the horizon. You will have uh, winter get shorter and shorter cooldowns on the Encore. Sagi's damage will arrive thanks to the Muramana. Kind of regardless of what happens, especially now that Sagi's gotten some gold back into their pockets. Uh, the Muramana will be a power spike regardless of what's going on. Um, but but it does feel as though you're holding on for dear life, waiting for that Muramana completion, waiting for Karato mm -hmm. uh, to complete their, their Rabadons. And I don't know that Burjaya Dragons can be proactive until that's complete. They really just have to stall for time if that's going to be the case. Now, double Pearl Belt for two of the members of Bajara Dragons so that they could get forward either with the upper hand or summon tippers to be dropped to the enemy lines. Whenever, if Karudo does not have the flash being up available, it can always be an escape mechanism as well. Now, itemization coming right in as enemy is already working on the death cap already. Same goes to the Ziggs that's on the opposing end. Just having Cookie doing a little random stroll right down bottom side. Chili's got to watch out, though. Yeah, Chili looking for an opportunity to get onto Demon. Cookie's kind of baiting it. Cookie looking at that Gromp. It's very tasty, uh, <laughs> but I don't think they, they're going to be able to get it. Uh, okay. So this is just the setup for this next dragon. You see it spawn in there at the bottom of the map. All five players for a Flash Wolves here. If I'm Jaya, I argue... Just shove in the mid lane. Use this Rift Herald charge. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna buy the bait. All the Flash Wolves roam to fight the Rift Herald. This and Burjaya Dragons are gonna try and burn this Drake during this time. This is so risky. Very much so. Now they really have to watch out Bobby on the early. If he does have the quickness dropping right in, it will still turn things around. But one good encore will do the trick for Winter. Now lobbing it a little bit in. Cookie now moving right in. Side. And here comes the big team fight. Tippers on the wrong side of the map. Now they get down from the air. Cataclysm comes right through. As the Darius will have to risk his life. But Pajara Dragons will eventually get one for themselves. But then again, Flash Wolves, they that, will. That's a win. That's actually a good I... one for them. Flash Wolves do get the kill. They do kill Zasune. I would argue, unless Flash Wolves turn instantly for this Baron, which would be a bit much even for them, that that is a win for Burjaya. Because again, they are just waiting for this team fight composition to come online. And they got out of that with the Dragon, which means the Flash Wolves aren't going to be able to insta-win the game uh, uh, with, with a pickup of the uh, Elder Drake later. I was really blanking on the name Elder Drake. Mm -hmm. um, they also get an Ocean Drake, which is very important for this team. Um, Karacho, you're right, didn't land a huge team fight Tibbers there. Spent mm -hmm. Tibbers instead, as I was talking about, uh, he was going to be spent chasing Cookie away from the backline flank, which which paid huge dividends because it kept Saki from dying. Yeah, I, I think that is definitely a necessity right there. But if you were to actually drop it, maybe in the front, it will be better. But, oh, with the grand entrance popping right in. This time round, Karu does not survive at all. Not even forcing a flash out of that situation. Chili will have to opt out. After a little bit of a poke and skirmish, I guess Flash Wolf is getting what they need to. Slowly and steadily yeah. picking it one after another. 
Well, I, I still don't know. Like, the trade is still relatively even with the bot turn being exchanged for a player. You take that most days of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, Zasune getting a lot of gold back onto them, trying to steal away these Raptors as well. Mm -hmm. We'll get away with it. Um, yeah. But for Giant Dragons, like, that was just a mistake from Karuzo. I don't know why Karuzo was so far forward at that turret. There's no real way to defend that turret in that game state, and you have to be able to recognize that. This is warded. They know what's up. That's right. For well, giant dragons making a beeline towards this Baron. Flash Wolves, it's a bait. They're trying to get a team fight out of it because they know that Burjaya Dragons at some point will be able to properly team fight to an extent that is terrifying. So the Flash Wolves are doing the right thing. They're trying to force a team fight during these next three to five minutes when they still have an advantage. Yeah, and this is one of the first few times that we can see that Pajara Dragons, they're being a lot more cautious, a lot more wary of the enemy's positioning. Here, here comes beautiful Apricahan. The difference does Ooh. not land, though. So Ethan will be able to trade right back, running them over what the quickness. Now that will buy enough time for the rest of Flash Wolves to join right in, but Ysera is coming from the side. And here comes the Encore. Double just Encore. Just pulling them back as well. Yesterday, he's the boss, but he goes in for another apprehend. He tries to slam him up with the Oxygen 13. Not the right move. He risks his life again, which he could and should have actually survived. But Saki gets <gasps> a massive kill there, and you've got Karatil follow following up. It's a two for one trade. Brajaya Dragons win out the team fight. Okay, we gotta just catch a little bit of breath here because you are absolutely right on that. Whatever exchange in any of all these team fights, it is already considering the fact that Brajaya Dragons, they are already winning the back row play. So getting more and more kills, especially on top of Kuki. Now that's some bonus shutdown goal on top of that. I, yeah. I guess this That's is where huge... BJD is going to be great. And also, it, it's like meta-textually incredible because it was such a long-range arrow for Saki to find that kill onto Cookie mm -hmm. that, that it, it bodes very well for Burjaya because you know going forward that Saki is on point. Saki is feeling his, his Varus play right now. Yeah, now the only problem here is, is Megan for Rump. That's dropping. a waste. Winter pretty low, but I agree. A little bit wasted. These, but... these have been mm -hmm. these have been some very rough mega inferno bombs from Bruce, uh, and that is the second time it's spent very early on, and it does not achieve much. Half HP oh. on the dragon. Oh, might just be actually still here. Flash Wolves will be able to actually make this one in. Here comes the Encore and the Resident will follow. The Nash and Justice will not be able to kill him off just about yet, but Sisune will still fall, and. Sarah still going for the chase. Now hopping onto Karudo. Karudo will be able to hold his own. BJ Lee, they lose two men out while Flash Wolves had it clean, but they barely had Demon surviving. I, I don't think that was necessary. Oh, Soggy. Very nearly fine to get an exit kill. I don't think that was necessary. I think Burjaya really. You, you obviously want to contest that dragon, but Saki and Winter Karuto, like the core of the team, get really out of position there. They, they drift away from the dragon. They very obviously don't want to fight it. Mm -hmm. And Shelly and Z Zisune are not on the same page. They mm -hmm. rush in for the team fight at uh, 2v5, and there's just no way they win that. So I don't, I don't know whether or not that was just the, the chaos of the team fight over on Burjaya, the, the right call getting lost, but something went wrong in the communication there, and it hurts Burjaya badly. Yeah. And after that, this will be uh, the cost and effect of that bad team fight that went down. But Chili is going to be looking to lock in Bruce. He does have the flash Ooh. available. And here comes the Megan Inferno Bomb as well. And Kuki, he's hopping right back. He will just turn invisible for the slightest bit. But Chili is still hoping to actually turn this one around when he does have the chance. Okay, now looking for the second coming. Let go! Four man! Eason! Eason, are you kidding me? And Kuki will not be able to survive out that demon now diving right in. Saki turns golden, but demon, he still has the barrier intact. So he will be pulling the play caller right in. Sisune survives with only one HP, but Flash Wolf got more than what they needed. And Eason on the Rakan does it again and again and again. And here he goes in for two massive knockups. 
winning the team fight for Flash Wolves and quite possibly ending this tiebreaker run from Berjaya Dragons. I simply don't know how you overcome that. Yes, the team fight is online now for Berjaya, but they're being outscaled because they did not win the critical team fights. At this point, you've got a 10,000 gold lead in the Flash Wolves' pocket. They've got two drakes to your one. They're looking at that elder that's about to spawn, and it doesn't much matter what Berjaya want to do in these team fights because they cannot execute it. Yeah, and now look at the build for Sagi. He's going for a little bit of a dose of an AP. I guess it does somewhat work for some barrels built, but I want to see the completion of it to actually, uh, of course, pick his brains out for a little bit. Now, Flash Wolves. Is going to be able to soak in all the damage so that the quickness will connect where Chili Chili will pick up. And uh, he will be landing the Cataclysm just to buy a little bit more time for a little bit more health, but the Master Justin will find him. He's doing now with the next one tier. A beautiful bear on top of every other member on the side of Flash Wolves, but Demons is running every member of the Town Dragon style. Slaying the beast, slaying them down, but this will be all. Flash Wolves will be your only team out of the group stages to see Summer Super Cup to have the perfect run in groups. And we have to bid goodbye to BJD. 6 0 are the Flash Wolves, the only undefeated team. And like you say, the flip side of that coin is that Burjaya Dragons are going home. Flash Wolves have to be proud of that, though. And no man more proud than Eason, who, for, for a second game today, just looks terrifying on his Rakan. A support play that, that single-handedly levels up the Flash Wolves team fights to, to heights that you don't normally see without full dedicated team fight compositions. He goes nil and 20. My God. Zero, zero, 20 for Eason. Wow. And mind you, it was against a poke lane right down bottom. He not only managed to, you know, keep both the Zaya and himself alive, he was the one in charge of setting things up, making it easier for Cookie to just land some of all these early form of kills and things just went a little bit out of hand the run. Team fights, it was looking to be a decent trade for the side of the Jar Dragons to save the very least. And just looking at the itemization, I, I, I was just wondering, you know, at one point in time, Sagi will not be dishing any form of damage towards Ysera at all. So Ysera could easily just run it down and focus anybody before even get to Sagi. And Demon, that fire bottle play was absolutely magnificent. So let's take a dive right into the Upper Rhino 5's play of the game. Welcome to the play of the game tunnel. The Oppo tunnel. <laughs> Take a look at this. Flash Wolves right off the bat, finding kills to their solo lanes. And you saw how the Berjaya Dragons team fight was supposed to work. You could see the, the ideas of it. Saki had a truly incredible game. I hope we get some of the highlights. This was one of them, where mm -hmm. Saki just weaves through the team fight, does so much damage from the back line as a Varus, and at the end, it just doesn't matter. Wow. Yeah, like, look at the charge, like, I wow. don't think he actually get any vision. It was just a blind shot that actually secured that double kill for Sagi. And he was just pit against the wall from that point onwards on a one foot streak. And it's this tag team of Eason and Demon that are doing such a good job. Like Yasara Cookie, normally stars in this team, certainly no slouches in this game. But it is Eason and Demon that win it uh, uh, for Flash Wolves. And it is that flexibility that wins mm -hmm. it for Flash Wolves as they mm -hmm. demonstrate that they have so many different players who can be the carries. Yeah, I guess this is a fight that didn't really went all too well because you look at the Jar Dragons, they were moving, dancing back and forth while they were They're just so by split. the edge of the bush. Like you said, being all too split up, there's no way that Chili could have actually gone out of that and they were already late to the dragon. And this is where Eason shines best. Yeah, Eason just incredible. Uh, and, and that fight in the in the dragon where, oh my god, 
for her. That man, fight's in the dragon where a Brajai Dragons got split up and went into a 2v5. I really think that cost them the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it's just a shot calling thing. A lot of League of Legends teams don't have a dedicated shot mm -hmm. caller. They have kind of a democratic process. And that sort of thing can get you in trouble if you don't know who, who to listen to, who is the voice on the team mm -hmm. in the fights like that. Because you really do need someone to say, no, we're going, or no, we're not going. Because I do think there's a chance for Brajai if they try either one. Yeah. Instead, they, they opt to try both at once, and it doesn't work very well at all. Yeah, uh, I, I have to certainly agree. It looked to be what? Scott Collins Get here. Get out of here! Oh, boy, it's Demon stealing the show again! I know he's the AD carry, but... All right, Demon, Demon had a very good performance, playing very aggressively. Um, enabled by Eason at every step of the way, and <laughs> will, will be your match MVP, according to our production. Yeah, well, I guess, as the saying <laughs> goes, behind every successful, successful man, there is a woman behind that, and that is the Zaya, which Demon has been playing. Right. So, I guess this is fair enough. Very, very much fair, but hopefully Issa will get to play a whole lot more Rakan. Undoubtedly the best Rakan Zaya combo that we have witnessed so far. I don't think that, you know, even the top seed from the other groups could actually match this pairing. Yeah, I, I, I really do think Flash Wolves, obviously the record speaks for itself. They are now the only top seed team to go undefeated. Uh, but I really do think Flash Wolves have to be one of the teams you watch going forward. I mean, I know I know that's weak phrasing. Let me rephrase it. I think Flash Wolves might win this entire cup. Um, yeah. I mean, I, if, if you just start by comparing them to the other teams, uh, Flash Wolves into Cerberus, Amihan, Evos, those are the top four we've now locked in. Mm -hmm. I think you I think you have to consider Flash Wolves as, as very serious threats to all three of those. I can't wait, man. Playoffs are going to be so much fun. We got one more game tonight, one more game before we cast our eyes fully towards the playoffs. It is going to be our final game of the group stage. So I hope you've enjoyed the broadcast all the way through them. Let's pay attention here to Buriram United taking on MVP. All right. It's definitely interesting where, you know, when we try to paint the picture of the possibility of that tiebreaker going down uh, for Pujara Dragons. Now we got that out of the way. This is more of, you know, flexing who is the better team overall to close up the entirety of our group stages of the C Icon Series Summer Super Cup. Now we start off with this draft here, Buriram United opts to eliminate the Gallo out of the way. MVP has been able to put it on the support role as well as mid lane efficiently. So to stop Buriram United, what should be the optimal band here? They look to that Gragas. A look to that Gragas. Uh, I'm, I'm really hung up on the value of Lee Sin in this matchup uh, with Papa. I'm really hung up on the value of Kaisa. Doesn't look like either of those are going to get banned out here. I do think the Lee Sin would be an obvious target ban against Buriram United. Mm -hmm. Keep our eyes on this. Yeah. With Gragas removed, you don't need to worry too much about the Jarvan, which is, is my obvious target. But instead, they're banning out the Camille jungle which is respectable. And with the very first pick here, they're going to be opting to go for the Zix pickup, which also allow MVP here to get Pagor the least in pick, but he will not snatch it away from Shiba right now. So another chance for Bergrave United to grab it while it's hot. So here we go, Ziggs Jarvan. Still a, a strong duo. We do get Papa on the Kaisa. Uh, the way MVP play, it's all about Papa. It's all about that bottom lane. So the fact that they got Kaisa and Braum this early on is very exciting for them. Program, we're going to try and answer that Kaisa with an Ezreal, which does work because the Ezreal can keep uh, his distance from the Kaisa. So you can play it a little bit longer range. Kinmon can stay safe from the Kaisa's early game, which is so scary to other characters. It's hard Ooh. to land all five. Uh, of the auto attacks. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this is Fizz Jungle. I suspect it is. 
I think this could be a fist jungle, or you could also send Akali over on towards the Baron lane to fight whoever he's going to be having, perhaps a Darius, but the answer will be a Renekton. So I want to see jungle fist as well because of how more sustainable we have had this composition previously. Okay, double marksman. Now I'm getting confused. I have asked for an Ash support back in the days, but I don't really think this is going to be, you know, the most ideal of situation to play her out in this what? particular matchup. But then again, Kaisa mid. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> MVP. 